Okay, folks, hey, welcome. This is Kurt Frankenberg, uh, the founder of Radioactive Trading and author of The Blueprint. I'm joined by my good friend from Power Options, Mr. Mike Chepka. Say hello, Mike. Uh, hello, everyone. It's good to see you all here. Welcome to today's presentation. Uh, Kurt's got some good, strong, powerful, useful information for any investor to use that he's going to share with us today. And, of course, uh, something that I think is uh, really telling and really important that he started showing a, uh, a week or two ago is his comparison uh, of his two positions that he had, the two times he traded a specific stock and how it performed with the radioactive trading techniques versus how it might have performed using other strategies. That's right. You know, I've, I've had a lot of folks uh, challenge me. <laughs> Mike, uh, uh, actually, I had a fellow challenge me to a duel, he called it, mm -hmm. uh, on, on the blog. And, uh, oh, gosh, that was, I don't know, maybe four or five weeks ago. Uh, of course, uh, now uh, I've been vindicated, you know, again. Uh, but uh, the, the, the point is that um, uh, reactive trading is all about cutting your losses down uh, when you do have them and then leaving your upside open. And uh, when, when we do that, uh, we encourage uh, ourselves to, uh, to do very well. It's called cutting your losers short, letting your winners run. Uh, Mike, I'm going to uh, make a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Kurt Frankenberg. I, I own a martial arts studio. And uh, in 1999, I got hurt. I went to one of these weekend covered calls trading seminars. I learned how to trade calendar calls and, and uh, covered calls and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, bull call spreads and bull put spreads. And uh, I, I did pretty good for a while, but uh, I ended up getting hurt really badly. And all I was doing was following directions, just following the directions of the uh, uh, covered call trading guru that was leading the class. And uh, I got hurt really badly. And, um, uh, I decided, Mike, that it wasn't that guy's fault necessarily, and it wasn't the market's fault, and it wasn't uh, fate or luck. It was my fault. And I think doing that, I think taking responsibility for that uh, that failure uh, was probably the number one thing that started me on the road to success. Mm -hmm. um, I started I started to study the lives of great traders, and I found that none of them had anything in common. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, at least as, at least as far as what to trade. And uh, how long to hold it, and, and uh, what signals to use to get in and out. Uh, uh, they all completely had different ideas. Uh, but uh, the one thing that they did have in common, I did discover, and it has made all the difference. And I ended up writing a book about it. Um, Mike, uh, let's let's hear a little bit about you, and then we'll let our audience introduce themselves too. Okay? Yeah. Well, thank you, Kurt. Uh, my story is similar, but I was spared. Uh, the sort of lack of a better term destruction that you faced in your portfolio. I learned from Ernie when I first started working with Power Options eight years ago. And for those of you that don't know, Power Options is a patented suite of search and analysis tools designed for self-directed options investors, and we do support over 23 different strategies. But I learned uh, eight years ago when I started trading, almost nine years now, I, start, I learned covered calls and naked puts from Ernie, and that's how I started trading. But I found a similar situation where I would get ahead a couple months, and then I'd have two or three bad trades, and I'd be back to square one, and then I'd have uh, some success and then uh, lose out again. And so I discovered uh, collars, started trading collars, which aren't as effective as the married put. We can talk a little bit about that later. Um, to limit risk. But about three years ago, um, one of our customers called up for a coaching session and wanted to know how he could use the historical suite of tools to identify a certain form of married put. And when I first looked at the setup, I of course could show the customer how to identify those positions, but I was concerned because I didn't think that the setup was going to be able to make any money. It just didn't look right to me based on the common knowledge that I was taught and the col uh, common information that was out there. Well, long story short, that customer was Kurt. I uh, presented my thoughts to him and was concerned about uh, if his strategy would make any money. And he invited me to his free presentation, just as you all are joining us today, so he could show me exactly how he makes money with this particular technique. And uh, I was so impressed with it that I invited Ernie, the president and founder of Power Options, to join me for the next two presentations. And Ernie was so impressed with Kurt's technique that we decided to partner up with Kurt and. Uh, enhance some of our power options tools to work with the radioactive trading technique and we're also using some of those tools to power new tools that are going to be available on the fusion service at radioactivetrading.com. That's right. Thanks so much for, for your work with that, um, Mike. I sure appreciate it. Um, Ray wrote in, he says, is anyone else experiencing bad background noise? Now I'm in a studio 
uh, and uh, Mike, you're in the office over there at Power Options. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully uh, our twin setup here isn't uh, causing um, causing uh, feedback. Uh, Rob says yes. Well, uh, Roberto says yes. Uh, Mark says yes. Gosh, guys, I apologize. Don't know uh, what I can do about it to fix it, except for to uh, uh, just sally forth and, and do the best I can. Thomas is not too bad, so. Good. All right, folks. Uh, there is some background noise, says Glenn, but I can hear you. Uh, Mark's is kind of a reverb. That's that's what you were mentioning to me, Mike, earlier. That's There's right, Kurt. And uh, what I'll do is I'll leave myself, just in case, I'll leave myself on mute, and I'll chime in uh, when you need me to come in on the prompt there. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and mute yourself, and then uh, uh, I'll just ask uh, Roberta, Mark, Thomas, Glenn, and Mark. Uh, once again, uh, did that help? You know, Mike uh, Mike muted himself so that there's less of a uh, less of a reverberation issue, I would think. Jim says no, Jim helped, not really. She says Glenn, I suggest please record the webinar and post it. Says Andy. But Roberto says same. Okay. Well, Mike, uh, since there's no appreciable difference, maybe let's just have you on and. Uh, which I apologize, I'll, I'll do my very best uh, to uh, present a, a, a good uh, presentation, even though uh, uh, there is a bit of uh, static or background noise. I'm going to close all the applications that I've got, uh, except for what I need, of course, to show this. Okay. And just so everyone knows, we are recording this presentation, and it will be archived possibly later this afternoon or early tomorrow morning. Very good. Okay. Uh, Mike, let's get our, our uh, audience uh, folks to introduce themselves. And uh, uh, first, I'd like to know, uh, geez, what kind of options trading you're doing now? Okay. Uh, first of all, do you trade options? You know, you, you might say, hey, uh, you know, <laughs> options mean a likey. <clears throat> do you do covered calls uh, and or naked puts? Uh, do you do long calls and or puts? Uh, are you doing spread trades and combinations like condors and butterflies and so on? Uh, or do you do naked calls? And uh, so, uh, Mike, I'm seeing to fill in quite a bit in the middle, not too many on uh, either side. In fact, nobody has to make calls yet. Yet, uh, six percent has said options mean no like, and I understand that. I understand. That. There's only two reasons why somebody wouldn't like options. I think uh, if they do like to trade, and uh, the first thing is that uh, perhaps maybe the terminology and the uh, uh, oh, just uh, the uh, jargon mm -hmm. is. Uh, you know, a little frightful. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> another thing is is that uh, perhaps you learned just enough about options like me uh, to get into trouble. You know, back in 1999, I, I learned just enough to uh, uh, leverage myself uh, really badly and, and get into trouble. And uh, uh, so, anyway, uh, options, the way that we play it is how to keep yourself out. And so I think you're going to really enjoy this. So if you were part of that 5% that said options mean to like you, uh, you know, stay tuned. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Now, Fifty-five percent are doing covered calls uh, or their counterpart naked puts. Uh, Seventy-seven percent looks like our uh, winner, folks that are doing long calls and puts. And sixty-eight percent, about seven out of ten, are doing spread trades and combinations. So that's marvelous. And then we had uh, five percent chime in there at the end. Uh, at mm -hmm. one point, it was zero, but now uh, five percent are saying naked calls. And Mike, I am cleared to trade naked calls, but I won't do it. But uh, I'm just not that sophisticated. <laughs> well, you won't do them. Ah, you won't do them <laughs> by themselves. But there is a way to implement that where it will not increase your risk, which That's is discussed right. in the blueprint. That's right. We're even going to show little hints of that today. You know, where where we have that uh, call that may may appear to be naked. Okay. All right. So uh, we asked what kind of options plays folks are doing now. Uh, what else? How did you come out uh, to to be with us here today? Okay. I'm just curious. And this just kind of helps us uh, uh, with knowing how folks come to our webinars. Uh, did a friend tell you about it? Um, did you do a web search looking for some answers about how to, oh, how to uh, limit your risk or uh, limit your exposure in the market? Uh, has it been through the forums? You know, at one point, most folks that were coming to Rig Active Trading webinars were coming because of an online debate I was having with a fellow in the forum. Uh, that fellow now is, is a friend, <laughs> and I've actually presented for his group. Uh, and that's another way you might have heard of, uh, heard me guest speak at another options trading forum or options trading group, uh, or you may be a power uh, a subscriber of Power Options. 
Very good. Okay, well, I'm going to leave that pull up for another three or four seconds and, uh, and close her up. And uh, we're going to get busy. Let's see here. Mike, it looks like uh, came here uh, five out of ten because there are subscribers to Power Options. And okay. that's second place web search. You know, these are folks looking for answers. So that's marvelous. Okay, well, let's, let's uh, dive in here. In this webinar, I'm going to make you three bold promises. Number one, I'm going to show you the solution to the biggest problem facing traders today. That's a pretty bold promise in and in, in of itself. In fact, we're going to do a baseline reading about uh, how happy you are with your trading. And then after showing you that, uh, that detail, okay, after showing you the solution, I'm going, to, I'm going to bet that you're going to wish that you had done it sooner. Okay? We'll find out later on. Number two, I'm going to show you uh, a riskless spread trade, which is done at a credit uh, and can take even more premium if the stock goes the right direction. Okay? It's mm -hmm. a spread trade, Mike, that takes a credit but introduces no risk. That's kind of a unique idea. Normally, this particular spread would involve infinite risk. But remember, I said that it would be risk riskless because of the way in which we're applying it. And then number three, I'm going to show one of several techniques that I use to take a credit while leaving the upside potential of the stock completely open. You know, uh, generally speaking, Mike, when you sell a covered call against a stock, you give up a lot of upside, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if the stock takes off as you expected and uh, maybe shoots up 10 or 15 percent, you're not going to get all of that gain, are you, Kurt? You've kind of capped your gain there to where you can be. Right. What if it doubled? <laughs> I mean, what if you sold a, a covered call on stock and took your 5 or 6% gain and the stock doubled in price at a 100% gain? You'd feel kind of silly about it. Well, uh, Mike, I've got a way to take credit on a stock that I own, uh, but still leave the upside completely open and mm -hmm. show it today. Okay? It takes a credit but does not use a short call. This is another one of our riskless spread trades, and it's likely that you've never seen this, this uh, spread trade anywhere else. Okay, most of the things that I do uh, are uh, known spreads. They're known already, but they're done in a context that uh, is fresh. It's new. This particular spread I think nobody uses. All right, toward the end of the program I'm going to point out the difference that knowing these two techniques, means, dollars, and cents, uh, in just this one trade example. And I'll have given it to you for no charge. Okay, so pretty cool. Uh, Mike, this uh, webinar is going to be 95% educational. It will be 5% promotional. I am going to talk about where to get my book at the end. Okay? All right. Uh, so review. This is what to expect today. Number one, we're going to solve the biggest problem in trading once and for all. Number two, I'm going to show a riskless spread trade that captures premium. And, uh, but, yeah, it, it captures premium but has no risk to it. And number three, uh, going to show how to take credit without limiting your upside. So we're ready? Let's take a baseline reading. How happy are you right now with your trading results uh, looking back at the, the last 12 months? Okay? Uh, are you happy with your trading results? The answers vary from yes, I'm happy in the last 12 months. I've been very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, another result is, well, I'm happy, but I can stand to be happier. That's for sure. Uh, another answer would be mixed emotions. I've won some, but I've also lost some, too. Uh, unhappy is the next uh, deal, uh, and that's just plain, uh, geez, I'd rather take a physical beating than a financial one. <laughs> that's actually something that my radio producer uh, said to me once, but mm -hmm. it's kind of funny. And then uh, uh, 13, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, 13% is what the answer is so far. My results sucked. I'm ready to throw in the towel. And for those of you that are joining us from outside the U.S., uh, throwing in the towel, that's a reference to boxing, uh, which, which I've known in boxing, kickboxing. kickboxing. Uh, throwing in the towel means that your manager looks at you and says, oh my gosh, my fighter's in trouble. And he throws the towel in the ring and takes the fighter out. He says, uh, you know, that's enough. That's enough punishment. Okay, so, all right, that, that was at 13%. It changed to 12 Okay, Mike, let me go ahead and close that poll and share the results. All right, sir. And, uh, yeah, this is interesting. We've got our, our uh, Pareto split, don't we? Yeah, the bell curve split. And this is actually, um, I hate to say it, this is not what we like to see, really, is it, Kurt? No, I'd rather see a lot more results in the first two answers. You know, I'm happy with my trading, or I'm happy. I'm kind of happy, but I could stand to be happier. But, uh, but Mike, this is actually what Vilfredo Pareto, the famous Italian economist in the 19th century 
said was a predictable outcome. Don't you know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about? <laughs> if you're not a, a, a finance geek like I am, uh, but Frito Pareto was an economist that uh, discovered what's called the 80 20 rule. And what he observed was that 20% of the landowners in Italy, his native Italy, owned 80% of the land, which means the other 80% of the landowners owned the remaining 20%. And he said that that was a predictable outcome. He found it in every country whose economy he studied. Mm -hmm. That 20% 20, 20 of the population seemed to come up with 80% of the advantages, and then 80% of the population got the remaining 20%. And, and look like that's what it looks like here because we had 20% saying I'm happy with my trading. Nobody said I'm, uh, nobody said I'm very very well. The 20% said I'm happy but can tend to be happier. The other 80% are unhappy with their trading results. You see where it says mixed emotions. I would I would have to say that that really means that's code for no, right? I'm not happy with my trading. Oh yeah, and that's not uh, that's not any kind of uh, insult or uh, you know pointing a finger at anyone. We both started the same way, Kurt. We saw that there were opportunities to make profits, but then we also saw there were problems with losing those profits in just one or two trades. So we saw an opportunity to make money in the market, but we weren't making it. That's right, Mike. I put up another question there. It says, "What do you think your biggest problem is?" Let me go ahead and do that, and then we're going to show the solution. We're going to so show the solution. And uh, I, I think it's going to be really mind-boggling. I think it's going to be really uh, exciting to folks that when they see the math behind what's going to make them turn the trading results around. Mm -hmm. But before we do, I want to say, what do you think? What do you think the biggest problem is? Okay, the biggest problem, just one problem. Okay, if I could wave a magic wand and solve just this one out of these five that are listed, what would that one be? What would you pick it to be? Okay. You think you need more time to be, uh, to be successful at trading? Do you want to be better at picking winners? Do you want to have better timing? Or do you want to you know, not lose so much? <laughs> or do you think you need better entry and exit signals? Right? Mike, this is interesting. Right now it's lining up with fives. Everything's visible with type five. Oh, no, it's changed. Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and close it and share the results. Okay, Mike, we have five different answers. To the one question, five different answers. Nine percent think they need to spend more time at trading. Thirteen percent just want to be better at picking winners. Uh, is there a formula? I'm going to have to say no. Uh, Mike, does this stock sound really good to you? How about Google? Does that sound like a good stock? Well, over the long term, maybe, but depending on my entry point and my exit point, I don't know if it's going to be a good stock. Right. What about Apple? Apple's a great stock. Great company to work for. Great company. Uh, great profits. Uh, but I tell you what, if you bought in in March 2008 and you sold in November 2008, you'd be a hurting unit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so it's not about picking winners. What about timing is bad? That's really the only thing. You know, only 4% said that. And that's good because I have no help for you <laughs> as far as timing. I am not good at timing. 52%, uh, this is the largest response. I wouldn't mind losing a few if I could just limit my losses a lot. And Mike, I do have something to share with that, don't I? Yes, sir. That is correct. Yep. Uh, folks that think they need better entry and exit signals, I'm going to show you something that will shock you. Uh, you will no longer uh, be that concerned with entries and exits. I mean, you're going to still use it, but you're not going to be that concerned with it anymore. Okay? You're going to concern yourself with one thing that really can affect your trading, and that is keeping your losers low. Now, everybody's heard this little ch chestnut mic. It starts like this. Cut your losers short, and what's the rest? Well, we want to let our winners run, don't we? Sounds a lot like uh, buy low and then sell high. We should just do that every right. time, shouldn't we, Kurt? Right. Uh, when my dad told me that when I was a little kid, you know, he said, that, son, do you know there's a way to make money in the stock market? I said, no. He said, Cut. He said uh, buy low, sell high. And I went, wow. You know, my dad's <laughs> really smart. <laughs> and then later when I actually did start to trade, <laughs> I found out that uh, he was joking with me. You know, he, he really didn't know how either. And, and the thing is that, uh, yeah, buy low, sell high. Sure, okay, but when you buy low, you find out that your stock goes lower, right? Or when you sell high, you find out that your stock goes higher. You, know, you feel like a chump. You got out too early, okay? But I will say this. Cut your losers short. That is something that's possible. Instead of uh, thinking that, hey, I'm going to always buy low, what you could do is you could say, well, you know what? I'm always going to get out with a very small loss, okay? But 
you give the practical instruction of how to accomplish this. Like a lot of times when folks uh, uh, try to control losses, what do they use? Well, we're going to use a stop order. That's the first thing. No one wants to spend money on insurance for their stock holdings. Why do I want to put more money in the position? A stop loss or a trailing stop is free. I can just use that and I'll be fine. Yeah. Well, you know, free costs. <laughs> you know, uh, if, if, if you uh, place a stop order, that stop order can be violated uh, and, and blow right through the stop and then uh, you get filled at a much worse price than you had bargained for. So it doesn't really provide protection except kind of a psychological buffer. Mm. And, and, and very often uh, that psychological buffer turns out to be not good. You know what? This is just plain annoying. Like I found out a really reliable way to predict the future. You know what it was? You'd buy a stock and then you'd set a stop loss, Kurt. And then what you did is you <laughs> predicted the lowest price that that stock was going to trade that day. <laughs> That's right. And I'm not joking. It's actually something that I've done with stocks and also with long calls you know, with options. Uh, where I've, I've uh, bought a stock and then set a stop order to protect me, quote unquote protect me, and the market maker drops down there, take mm -hmm. that cheap cheap uh, inventory, and then the stock's price uh, goes right back up. Really annoying, okay? But uh, uh, it's not as bad as, as uh, for example, getting caught in a flash crash or something like that. Mike, uh, uh, that saying, cut your losers short and let your winners run, is that represented well by this graph here, the, uh, the covered call trade? Well, no, and this is also a parity trade to a naked put. A naked put would have the same risk-reward profile that we're seeing with this covered call. But it looks opposite, doesn't it, Kurt? It looks like we're letting our losers run and cutting our winners short, doesn't it? Exactly. In fact, uh, if I had said to you, Mike, uh, I've got a choice between two investments. I've got one, but if I'm, if I'm right about it, I can only make a little bit. Okay, but if I'm wrong, I can lose a lot. Mm. Or I've got another investment, and if I'm right about it, there's no telling how much I can lose. Yeah. But, but if I'm wrong, I can only lose a tiny bit. Well, which of those sounds like a better way to go? Well, door number two sounds a much better approach for longer-term investing, Kurt. Exactly. Okay, but what happens is a lot of folks get kind of seduced by this idea of uh, taking credit for sitting on a stock. They, they get this idea that, hey, you know, it's kind of cool. It's like owning a house and you rent it out month after month. Mm -hmm. You get income month after month just like owning a house. Well, you know what? I've invested in real estate, Mike. I found out something. You have to have insurance. <laughs> Very true. They, yeah, you, you, the bank won't even let you borrow money on the house if, if it's not sure or insurable. You know? so, mm -hmm. uh, and the, the state won't let you rent it out if it's not insurable. It's, it's a, it's a bad scene, okay? But uh, covered call uh, is one way to sort the good stocks out of your account and keep the bad ones, so I, I don't like it. Um, spread trades, well, Mike, is this congruent with the idea of cut your losers short and let your winners run? Well, it solves part of it. In this case, with the bear call spread, it looks like we have cut our losers short, so we've, we, we know up front what our maximum risk is going to be. But at the same time, it looks like we've capped our gains also if we're right in the direction of the stock. That's right. Okay, if we're right about the direction of the stock, you know, uh, here we're betting on the stock going down. If the stock goes down uh, below the low strike, we get our maximum there. Well, if the stock goes down to $10, if it goes down to $5, if it goes down to a penny a share, you know, we could have set this up to let our winners run, but we haven't. Mm -hmm. We haven't. The bear call spread uh, bets on the stock staying below a certain level, but uh, you can't let your winners run. If you're really, really right, you, you, you don't get any. Okay? So I got this, this crazy idea, Mike. If I was going to trade bullishly, which, which is what a covered call trade is, covered call is a bullish trade. No matter what they say, they say, well, it's neutral expectation. Well, baloney. Because the most... Uh, 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 component, the biggest component of the cover call trade is your ownership of the stock. Mm -hmm. it's, you take, it's you taking on the risk. That's what it is. That's the biggest component of it. And so uh, if you're going to buy stock, you need to be bullish on that stock. Okay? And uh, safe, oh, by the way, this is not my propaganda. This, <laughs> this is something I pulled off of, uh, uh, of uh, Options Express, you know, my broker. The risk, I'm going to say it, it, it is safer because you've got a locked-in, limited risk situation. 
Mm -hmm. But the reward, look at this, Mike, the reward is unlimited. Let's go back two slides, okay? This protect, this uh, covered call deal, they say bullish, yeah, okay. Uh, safer, I don't know if I agree, but, but they do say that it's safer. But there's a limited reward, okay? So which of these graphs that we've looked at, which of these plays, is truly a situation where you can set up, cut your loser short, let your winner short? Well, that would be the protective put or the married put position, Kurt. I think that's pretty, pretty obvious. Yeah, it's the only one that, that actually does it, okay? All right, so I'm going to take a second right here, and I'm going to solve the biggest problem that most folks have in their trading. Uh, the structure of a radioactive profit machine is different than a normal married put trade, okay? And here's how. Uh, I'm going to show uh, this particular uh, one because we're going to use it in an example later. Okay, but, the, but uh, this trade from 2010 is congruent with the trades that I'm making now, okay, the, the way that it's set up. Here we have Altera shares at 27.35, and I pick up, on September 14, I pick up a March 2011 $29 put option. So, now, Mike, that's backwards two different ways from a normal married put. What, what are those ways and how come? Well, if you go to your broker or you find some free educational information on options investing on the Internet, and you look up protective put or married put, you'll typically see a description where the married put or protective put is buying shares of stock and buying an out of the money put option, a put option that is below the current stock price and maybe just one month out of time. So your cost for the insurance is only maybe 70 cents, 80 cents or a dollar. In this case, September 14th, 2010, I might have bought shares of Altera at 27.35 and at the same time bought in October, maybe 25 put for a dollar. Now, the problems with that is that the insurance is at 25. I only paid a dollar in that scenario, but in order for the insurance to trigger, the stock has to drop two dollars and thirty-five cents, and I paid a dollar for the position, so I'm really risking three dollars and thirty-five cents total on that type yeah. of out-of-the-money married put. And if I'm considering holding the stock long term, I have to buy the put month by month by month, and that's going to be a higher cost basis over time. What you've done here is reverse those two basic concepts. You've gone further out in time. We're about six months out in time now with the March put, and you're buying an in-the-money put. But what's the argument you always get, Kurt, the same argument I gave you three years ago? Well, what you had mentioned to me, Mike, was, uh, Kurt, this, this looks good, and I understand you limiting your risk, but you can't make any money until that stock goes you know, for example, in this setup, the stock has got to go to $30.95 before you make a dime. Mm -hmm. Now, that's true in some settings, okay? It's true if I hold that stock all the way out to March expiration. But, Mike, I don't have any intention to do it. Okay. Right, right. Um, uh, yeah, the thirty dollars and eighty-five cents. Uh, you look at that and, and say, "Well, geez, you know, you spent a lot." Well, as you pointed out just a minute ago, Mike, if you bought a twenty-five dollar put and bought it for October, well, it'd be only a month of protection. It would cost a little less, but it would protect at a lower level. If the stock did go down, it'd end up costing three dollars and thirty-five cents. You know, dollar for the put, two thirty-five for the loss that you take in the stock. In this case, Mike, take a look. The most I could possibly lose is $1.85, so that's actually better protection, isn't it? That's exactly right. We have a low risk now. All that we're risking is the time value of the put option. It is priced at three fifty, but uh, roughly, um, I'm sorry, $1.65 of that is the intrinsic value, so only $1.85 is what we're risking on the position, but 6%, a low single-digit percent of our total investment. Right. You know what, Mike, I should probably put together some more slides because I like your example. I like your idea. Uh, you know, the Altera <coughs> protection at 25, if I put it at, at, at about a $25 put a month out, it costs me a dollar. Well, that's a dollar for a month of protection. But take a look. I've got a uh, dollar eighty-five for six months yes. of protection. Yes. That's a much better deal, isn't it? Absolutely. It it yeah, and it protects at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And when we take this dollar eighty-five and we divide it by the thirty eighty-five that's in the position, we come up with six percent of the positions at risk. Now, Altera is a pretty volatile stock. <clears throat> if I was to try and follow it with a six percent stop, Mike, what would have happened over the last couple of weeks here? Oh well, he would have gotten stopped out, 
And <laughs> due to the gaps that happened, I mean, some mornings we opened up down 400 points, and another morning we opened up down, I believe, 540, or eventually it ended up being 540. But it was a good 200-point, 300-point jump in the beginning. You might not get filled at that 6% loss. You might get filled much worse because the stop loss really is a market order, as you mentioned in your promotional email this morning, that email you sent out to everyone. And if the stock dropped 10% from where it opened, we're not going to get filled at 6%. We're going to get filled at the 10% loss without our, uh, our, our say-so. It just happens automatically. Yeah, we don't have any further input. It just happens. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if, if, if before the market opened, we take that uh, uh, loss off, I, I mean that stop off, if we take the stop order off, uh, then we're just resorting to mental stops again. We're resorting to... Uh, recreational trading <laughs> instead of instead of trading lots of business. Now, Mike, here's that objection again. That objection was, hey, you invested thirty eighty five. You can't make a dime until Altera moves from its present price of twenty seven thirty five all the way three dollars and sixty cents all the way to three dollars uh, thirty ninety five, and then uh, you only make ten cents. Mm -hmm. you know, that's 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 the conventional wisdom. The conventional wisdom is uh, that stock has to move a lot for you to make a little. So this is a bad idea. Well, actually, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and show how it works, okay? Uh, by using the income methods, which are riskless spread trades, uh, I had locked in a $0.75 cent per share profit by the time Altera had only reached 29 quarter, okay? And it went higher than that. So what does that do, Mike, to the $30.85 break-even theory? Well, it kind of blows it out of the water, doesn't it there, Kurt? Exactly. I did two spread trades that were not, that introduced no risk at all. And uh, by doing those two spread trades, I'm able to lock in a profit, okay? And the stock is only 2940, and I couldn't have done one of the spread trades. I couldn't have done either of these spread trades without both the stock and the put in place, okay? So here's the deal, okay? We are going to uh, go into the details a little bit later on, but first I'm going to run a little another poll, okay? Uh, I am going to give you a little bit of hint first, and then, and then we'll get into the details. I have picked up 500 shares of Altera, plus put protection for $30.85. And by the time the stock was at 29.40, I was bulletproof. There was no way I could possibly lose. And then after bulletproofing, which is cool enough as it is, after bulletproofing, uh, the position went on to make 12% or 11.9% after commission. So this will be real nitpicky. Okay? All right. Now, before going on to the income method, let's just begin with my claim of having solved the biggest problem that any trader faces. Mike, earlier when I showed the setup, I showed where it had 6% maximum risk, right? Yes. Okay. So let's look at some of the plays that folks out there might be doing. Uh, number one, straight stock. Number two, covered calls. Number three, buried put. Okay. Now, if your stock goes up 20%, how does the stock owner do? Well, we're going to make 20%. Let's ignore commissions for now and just say zero commissions, perfect world. We bought a stock, moves up 20%, we make 20%. Right. Okay. What about the covered call player? Does he make his money? Well, no. Remember, we capped our gain. Yeah. We entered into an obligation to deliver our shares of stock at a set price. So we might take in a 3 4 or 5% premium if we're selling an out-of-the-money call and it moves up as we expected. So we're only going to make 5% unless we dump more money into the position and then try to roll the call and then risk having it come down. But let's just say we're not. Stock goes up, yeah. we make 5%. Let's, let's say we, we get out of these positions all at the same time. Very good. Uh, now, the, yeah, the very put is actually going to make less too, isn't it? I mean, we have to be honest that the insurance policy does cost something, and though it doesn't behave the way everybody expects it does, it does behave somewhat to the downside. It does keep uh, me from realizing as much gain sometimes. Okay, so uh, Mike, we're looking at uh, the stock going up 20%, but my married put only picks up 12. Is, is, does that sound reasonable in your experience with my kinds of trading? Yeah, that's right. With a sudden move, and let's say the first 30 or 60 days, we'll still be able to realize maybe 60 to 65 percent of the total gain as the stock moves up. Maybe more, right. depending okay. on the, the particular position. Each stock's a little bit different, but yes, I think that's very reasonable. Okay, very good. All right, so uh, let's take our winnings, okay, because all three of those plays worked. All three of those plays were bullish. Mm -hmm. now, owning stock is bullish. Uh, uh, selling a covered call uh, involves ownership of stock, which is bullish. 
and the net it's net bullish and, and uh, although some stock trading gurus will say that it's neutral it's not okay uh, <laughs> and the very put uh, is also bullish okay so all three plays worked out now let's put our money into a new play but this time we've got a problem stock goes down 20 percent so what happens to our stock player well we lose 20 percent and okay. you might think we're at break even because we gained 20% and then we lost 20%. But that's not the way that math works when we're investing, does it, Kurt? Right. Uh, we're going to show you that's a net loss. And if I had been playing a, a long call here, trying to substitute a long call for stock, mm -hmm. would my percent loss be less or more? It would be more. So if we did a long call instead of the stock when it went up 20%, we might have made 80% on our call, but now the stock drops 20%, we're going to lose 80 to 90% on the second call. That's right. Now let's look at our hedges. Okay, a covered call is a hedge. Okay, we, we collect a little bit of premium. In fact, I'm going to be real generous and say that we could get 5% of the value of the stock for just selling the call, and then the stock goes down. So what do we lose instead? We'll lose 15%. As you mentioned, we hedged a little bit from the loss, so we didn't realize the full 20% loss on the second trade. Right. Now, I just showed how I set up my reduction profit machines, right? It's like a married put, but it reverses everything. Instead of uh, a short period of time, it's like six months or better. Mm -hmm. Instead of being out of the money, that put is in the money, and we're guaranteed to get most of it back. You know, because, because it's in the money, we're guaranteed to get the intrinsic value of that put back. All right. So... The very put only loses 6%. Now, let's look at the net. When a straight stock makes 20% and then loses 20%, we're not at break even, are we? Unfortunately, no. No. It's a net loss of 4%, even without commissions. Here's the deal. When you have a 20% win, okay, and then you take your new amount, and then you suffer a 20% loss, well, you end up behind the curve. This works the other way, too. Mm -hmm. If you have the loss first, you know, if I had $10,000 and had the uh, twenty percent loss, and I'd end up with eight grand, and, and I'd play my eight grand and make a twenty percent gain. I'd have uh, sixteen hundred, so that'd be ninety six. It it ends up being ninety six hundred both ways, if you lose first or if you win first. Okay, so that's a net loss. We're behind the curve. Now, what do you think is going to happen with the covered call? Uh, I know that we're going to enhance a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. well, maybe not. <laughs> we're going to enhance something. <laughs> what we're going to enhance is the problem. The problem is when we cut our uh, winners short and let our losers run, well, we do worse. Okay. Uh, even though we took less of a loss, because we took so much less of a gain on the way mm -hmm. up, uh, we end up with a bigger net loss. Okay. Instead of four percent, it's ten point seven five in this example. Okay. But with the married put, we made only, you know, I put in quotes, only 12% on the way up, okay, when the stock moved 20. And uh, we only lost 6% on the way down when the stock had lost 20. Well, how does that pan out? Looky, out of the three plays, this is the only one that had a net gain. Now, I want to mention something, Mike. Uh, we were right only half the time, so we've got a 50% record that it took the winners. Correct. 50%. 50% wins, okay? But uh, somehow or other, we were able to uh, make money with only 50% wins because of the structure of this trade. It's kind of cool. You see, what we've done here, this is the same muscle. I want to point out that this was the same stock, the same timing, okay? Uh, if we cut our losers short and let our winners run, we can play the same market but have different end results than our neighbors that played the same stock. Just kidding. Isn't that something? Now, I'm going to go ahead and give a, a real-life example of this, uh, Mike, using my Altera example. I played Altera twice with uh, about the same position size. Uh, the first time, the stock was at you know 27.35, and so I picked up 500 shares. The second time, the stock was uh, in the high 40s, so I picked up over 300 shares. But it was about the same amount of capital at risk in both trades. Okay. Well. The stock goes up 17.3%, but I only make 12%, right, on the way up. Now, on the way down, the stock loses 21.8%. In fact, it could have gone even further, mm -hmm. uh, and, I would and I would still only lose the 5.6, because 5.6 is where I lock in my possible losses, 
Okay. So uh, let's just take a look at, at the, the graph over the last 12 months. Okay, here's, here's what happened. I picked up in September of 2010. Picked up Altera uh, at this point and got out at this point. The stock's gain uh, itself, just the stock itself, was 17.3%, and my radioactive profit machine made me only 12%. Okay, this is real dollars, real time, 500 shares. Okay, now, here's my second entry into uh, Altera. Okay, I misread the signals, didn't I? <laughs> I A little bit, good. but uh, I'm guilty of that myself. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't very good at my timing. You see, I got out at this point right here. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and truth is, is I could have held on to this point right here and gotten out there and had the same end result. I would have had the same end result because of my put option locking in my lowest possible loss. You see, the lowest possible loss was 5.6%. So the stock in the time frame that it played that went down 21.8, even if I had held it even longer and gotten out at the very bottom at 31% loss, my loss would have been uh, what it was, which is 5.6%. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you make, with just playing, playing the stock, like you make 17.3 on the way up and then lose 21.8 on the way down, or worse, well, that's not good. Now, now, if you're playing a long call, is that going to exacerbate the results? What's going to happen? Yeah, my experience is a little bit around uh, 60 to 70 percent uh, for gains and losses. So we would have made, I'd say, probably with a 17.3 percent gain, we might have made 85 percent on the long call. It, with a loss of 21 percent, we might be down about 95 uh, percent or so of what we invested on that call. Right. Let me point something out. If you have a 40% loss, 40 or zero, a 40% loss, to recover from that 40% loss, you have to have a 67% gain. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a 50% loss, you have to have a 100% gain. You know, and and uh, so uh, trading long calls uh, in this same time frame with these same stocks would have been disastrous. It would have been really bad. Okay, but uh, you know what, what we did instead here was I set up a particular structure that could not lose more than five, six percent. Okay, six percent the first time I played it, five point six the second time I played it. But the point is, Mike, uh, on the way up I made a little less. On the way down I lost a lot less. Okay, so the net gain for the married put play, okay, was uh, over a thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I made eight. Uh, uh, well, I think it was nineteen uh, hundred and something on the way up, and, and lost nine eighty one on the way down. But it's just over a thousand. Okay, for the net, for the net of both plays. So I was using the same stock both times. So uh, again, when we when we said, "What do you think the biggest problem is?" Okay, uh, uh, thirteen percent said, "I want to pick winners more often." But that argument is gone because this is the same stock both times, right? What about this? What about uh, uh, timing the trades? Well, it was the same dates. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. What about the entry and exit signals? Well, I use the same entry and exit signals that, that I might have used with uh, stock. Okay. So it's not about your trading system. What it was about, Mike, was it was about this. 52% that answered and said, uh, I wouldn't mind losing a few if I could just limit my losses more. I think now most of us know uh, that it's a bigger deal than we thought before. It's right, and I've got a deal. couple of Once questions for you, Chris. Okay, okay oh, sorry. You know, just before you hit me with those questions, mm -hmm. just before you hit, hit me with those questions, I just want to lead up to and execute this one poll, and then I'll go ahead and take those questions, okay? Uh, don't pick stocks, I like to say. Pick stops. You want to make it so that you can't lose more than single-digit percents. Now, so far, we are going to show those riskless spread trades, and I am going to take those questions that Mike is uh, 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 going to bring up, okay? But I want you to turn back the calendar and convert each of your losses last year to 6% or less mm -hmm. while keeping your winners, okay? Oops. What what would you uh, say uh, would be the result of that? Would you do it if you had the opportunity to, okay? Would you have said, yes, I'm happy with my trading results? Uh, did you say no or mixed emotions, but uh, this would have made a difference? You would have been happy? 
Okay. Uh, did you have a losing year, but this would have made it a winning year? Uh, would you have lost, but at least lost much less? Mm. Or can you honestly say, Kurt, I never had a loss over 6%, but I still lost overall in the, in the last 12 months. I never, never suffered a loss more than 6%, but I still lost overall or less six, uh, 12 months. I'm going to live, uh, give that uh, list a little bit of time to populate, Mike, and uh, go ahead and answer, uh, ask your questions now, or, or pose the questions that, that, were, uh, that were coming in. Hello, Mike. Hello, Kurt. Oh, yeah. Well, I was, please, uh, I was just looking at questions. the, uh, thinking of the slide you had up previously with just to reinforce some of the ideas. These aren't questions that came in from our uh, audience, but I wanted to reinforce it to the audience with some of those suggestions. We talk about stock picking. Well, I tell you what, just looking at the last 10 days or leading up to the flash crash or leading up to 2008, a system of picking stocks that had been successful for me over the past five or six years, where on average I'm right maybe 85% of the time that the stocks move up 5% or 6% over a 45-day time period, I'm following the same rules that have worked for me in the past, but would they have worked during those time frames? Would it have worked during the last 10 days? No, it wouldn't have worked at all, would it? Uh, and yeah. regarding the other aspect, you know, when we talk about having bigger winners, can we control the winners? We can't control how much we're going to win. If we're right, that's not necessarily we're going to make 8, 10, or 12 percent. We can't control that. The only thing we can control is how much we're going to guarantee we're going to lose on any given position. Yeah. I wouldn't say guarantee we're going to lose, but, but we can guarantee that the maximum that we can't lose is. That's what I meant, yes. Thank you. Point. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and that uh, that ought to be kept down to single digits. Now, Mike, uh, we had uh, an interesting result. Uh, everything is available by five here. Forty percent would have said yes. I'm very happy with my trading. What was the percent before? I think it was zero in that category, right? It was zero percent, sir. Nobody said I'm very happy with my trading. Some said I'm happy, but I could stand to be happier. So, fifteen percent said no or mixed emotions, but would have said yes. 20% had a losing year, and this would have made it a winning one. And 25% would have still lost last year, but they would have lost much less. So, uh, and 0% said, nobody said, well, geez, Kurt, I did practice this kind of money management, and I still got hurt. Mm -hmm. Nobody said that. Okay. So, uh, Mike, would you say that 100% of the audience could be benefited by what we've shown so far? I would agree with that completely. Right. Okay. Uh, so would you do it? But you know, if if you could keep your your losses down to six percent or loss, uh, six percent or less, would you do it? Okay. All right. Now at this point, Mike, I'm going to take a quick break, do a two minute commercial. Okay. Uh, going to take us over into um, radioactive trading and show where to pick up the blueprint. Whoops. Google's my home page. Okay. Radioactive trading on the products page, the number of uh, uh, losses and guarantees that come along with the blueprint. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, you know, it's, it's $3.39 for the blueprint uh, and $11 shipping if you live within the U.S. It's a little bit more up from outside the U.S. But uh, that $350 or so is about one-tenth of what it cost me to go to a weekend seminar. And Mike, I've been told uh, by a number of folks, you've been told this too, that it's more fun. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. have, have you heard that? Yeah. Have you heard that expression uh, here recently? I had one gal tell me that it was ten times as valuable and cost one tenth the price. Okay, so, right. Uh, it's a pretty good. Pretty good deal. <clears throat> okay. So there's my brief commercial. Okay. All right. Now I know that some folks are, are ready to take a look at the ink methods. Do, do we have other questions or other things to come up? Well, there's just one that, uh, um, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, one question Lloyd just asked. Um, in this kind of market with increased soon fears, panic, higher volatility, he says he noticed that the puts are now more expensive. Yes, that's going to happen. Uh, so when he looks at the married puts that he usually sets up now, the loss is more than 10%. Do we have any suggestions? And, and that's a you know, a basic point of, uh, a basic 
issue that can come up is that when you have fear in the market, increased volatility, the puts will cost a little bit more, so there might be a higher risk than you're used to seeing. But there are still positions out there, still good positions out there that have the proper risk set up, that have the limited risk you can identify using the tools in Fusion or the Power Options tools as well. Um, so I, as always, Kurt, I want to bring this up too. I asked Lloyd to send me some of the examples of the positions that he's looking at. Lloyd does own the Blueprint and has been with us for a while. But I asked him to send us an email to support at RadioactiveTrading.com after the presentation so we can uh, further take a look at some of those positions and uh, let him know what some of our suggestions are. Right. That is uh, something that comes along with your blueprint purchase is, is uh, free uh, ongoing uh, support for strategies within the blueprint. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say uh, this, Mike, is there anything wrong with sitting in cash for a couple of weeks while the volatility uh, decides what it wants to do? No, and I've actually seen two or three <laughs> positions. When I came back from vacation, Kurt, as you know, I was gone here and there for vacation with my family uh, over the past couple of weeks, and I didn't touch any of my trades for the past two weeks, just went through August expiration, let some things expire, didn't do any adjustments. And on Monday when I came in, I saw a couple positions that I've been tracking that I was interested in trading and uh, just decided now is not the time to pull the trigger. going to let a week go a week or two, see if things settle down a little bit and I can get in a little bit better prices. So I'm just sitting on cash right now, haven't opened any new married puts, haven't opened any new collars, but probably in the next two or three weeks I'm going to be looking to open four or five new positions. Yeah. Now, folks, uh, uh, Mike, uh, Mike won't blow his own one, but, I'll, but I'll, I'll tell you that uh, last year Mike was able to catch a winner that made him 59.8% in seven months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, he wouldn't have bragging rights if he was good at losing money. <laughs> but right. Mike, you're, not, you're no good at losing money anymore, are you? No, I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> You've got this knack of being able to uh, uh, put insurance out of position. And uh, gosh, in 2008, with that crash, uh, I had a position that was uh, uh, that that declined by 75 percent. The stock declined by 75 percent. Office but Max. Of, yeah, but because of your your put position, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. And some income methods that you used. You ended up getting out of that at a gain, small gain. Maybe about 1%, 1.6%, I think. Yeah. Now, 1.6% isn't a really big figure, but you know what? It beats the crap out of what CDs you were paying. And That's it right. Really beats the, it beats the living toner out of uh, uh, taking a 75% loss. Mm -hmm. so, so pretty cool. So anyway, if, if Mike is staying in cash, right, I think it's okay. It's okay. And then while you're sitting in cash, who is it that, that brought it up? Was it Glenn? It was Lloyd, no. actually. Lloyd. Okay, Lloyd. Uh, it's okay to sit in cash for a little bit. And while you're sitting in cash, what you want to be doing is reading through your chapters of the blueprint. Okay. And, uh, and reinforcing some ideas. Okay. Now, having said all that, let's uh, let's get back to business because I know some folks are ready to see those riskless spread trades. Mm -hmm. um, the, inc the income methods can be used to reduce this distance, this gap, Mike, uh, between... Uh, the quote unquote break even and the most possible loss that you can have. Okay? And uh, I'm just going to review that position here. Altera shares were at $27.35. The March $29 put was $350. So that makes the total invested $30.85. And everybody says what? We're not going to make a dime until the stock moves up to $30.95. Okay, that's that's what folks believe. Okay, but I'm going to show you right now that it isn't true. Okay, now our guaranteed exit is twenty nine dollars, so I'm guaranteed to get most of this three dollars and fifty cents back, or not most of it, but much of it. I'm guaranteed to get a buck sixty five of it back, right? That's there's, right. There's in, yeah, there's intrinsic value and there's time value. Well, the time value really is only what's at risk here. Okay, so now when I talk about uh, income methods, most folks' thoughts go to the obvious. Uh, for, for example, a covered call. So you would convert your married put into a collar, mm. right? But covered calls limit your upside. And uh, I've discovered a slew of ways to take income without selling covered calls. Now, one of the things that I show today is going to include short calls, all right? But one I'm going to show today doesn't. And a lot of my methods don't include short calls. It's kind of cool. On Altera, I use a technique that I call the money net. It caught much more premium than a covered call. Uh, in fact, uh, when, when I need to sh close a short in order to keep the stock, uh, it's like I got paid to do it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool. 
and then another technique that I use, I, I like to call the bulletproof vest. It's also called the method number three. Uh, bulletproof the stock just before an earnings announcement so that when the earnings announcement came out, well, if, it, if the stock went down, it could not hurt me. But if the stock went up, I could gain more and uh, not, uh, not be limited by a short call. So right. first let's show uh, the money net. We're going to show income method number five. It was buy one call and sell two at a higher strike. Uh, mm -hmm. Mike, uh, the stock was trading at this point uh, about a dollar higher than where I had purchased it. I had purchased it at twenty-seven thirty-five. Now it was trading at twenty-eight fifty, exactly midway between the twenty-eight and twenty-nine dollar strike prices. Okay. So, so there's a problem that I'm uh, presenting here. Okay. Let's just let's just say that my uh, position is not five hundred shares, five puts. Let's say it's 100 shares and one put, just for simplicity in the math. If I sell two calls, what's the problem? What well, I if I own 100 shares of stock, Kurt, and I sell two calls, I do have a covered call position, but I'm also left with a naked call that has infinite risk to the upside. Bad, bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. We don't want to have infinite risk. Okay, so what I do is I cover that risk by purchasing another call. So now I've got uh, one short call sold against stock and one short call sold against the long call. Mm -hmm. And I have a net credit, right? By buying uh, the $28 call for a buck forty-five and selling two $29 calls for $0.85 cents a piece, we generate a net credit of $0.25. Cents. Okay, now, if I did this by itself, if I had just simply bought one and sold two, that is a play that's known. That play is called the ratio to call spread. It looks like this. You get paid to put it on, mm -hmm. and if your stock stays down, you get to keep your credit, right? Oh, yes. If the stock moves, yeah, if the stock moves up, this is the direction uh, left to right. is the direction of the stock price going up, okay? If the stock price goes up, you stand to make even more. But if the stock price continues to go up, you may have an obligation to pay back uh, and deliver your stock. And in fact, that that uh, that obligation can lead to infinite risk, infinite risk. So uh, that's not cool. But guess what? Uh, because I own the stock, there is no infinite risk. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Now, Mike, do you remember the, the the stock and the put position together cost thirty eighty five, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, by by taking this credit, okay, I've taken this credit by selling the ratio call spread, which in the context of the Mary put I call the money net, okay. So it reduces the cost basis of the stock and put down to thirty sixty, right? That's right. Okay, so we've reduced our cost because we took in some credit. Absolutely. Okay. Now, I still have a guaranteed exit of $29 because I've got that $29. So now my at risk is no longer $1.85 or 6%. Now it's down to $1.60. So are you following me so far? I think you are. I'm with you so far. We still have got the guaranteed exit, so we lowered our risk down by $0.25. Cents. Great. Okay, good. Now, uh, here's what happened. Uh, October expiration comes around. It's October 15th, Friday the 15th. And uh, the stock is up. The stock is up above $29. In fact, it's $29.40. Now, if I had sold a covered call, that's what I did, and I wanted to keep the stock, I'd have to buy to close the call, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. So we've got to close our obligation, cancel our obligation if we want to go ahead and continue trading. Okay. On the last page, my cost basis for the married puts had been taken down to thirty sixty, and to close that call, if I'm buying it back, it costs me 55 cents. Okay, so that brings up my cost basis on the stock and the put to 31.15. I still have my 29 dollars put in place. Now, does this look like I'm going in the right direction? No, I think you're going in the wrong direction, sir. We've increased our risk total from 185 to 215. Where are you going with this, sir? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, remember, buying to close this one call uh, caused something else to happen. Okay? And what it is, is uh, I had told you that there were short calls at the $20 strike, and I got paid to hang on to the stock and leave the upside open. 
Well, right. uh, let's see how let's see how that works. Okay, let's not forget. On September twenty fourth, I had bought one twenty eight dollar call for each hundred shares of stock, and sold two twenty nine dollar calls uh, against for eighty five cents each. Okay, so uh, I collected twenty five cents net. Now, uh, on October fifteenth, I'm I'm buying to close just one of these two short calls. Got it? Got it. Okay, so I've taken in $0.25 cents and I'm paying back $0.55, cents, so it looks like a net debit of $0.30, cents, okay? Uh, and that's the management cost, but it leaves something. What it leaves is a bull call spread. Mm -hmm. See, there's still a, a long $28 call and a short $29 call sold against it, and it's expiration Friday and it's the closing hours, and the stock is above 29 bucks. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is, so far I've paid thirty cents. I've 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 gotten twenty five cents in for doing the <clears throat> the ratio call spread, fifty five cents to uh, close one portion of it, right? And then I still have the bull call spread, and it's and it's closing, it's closing for the full credit. Essentially, this thirty cents of management cost buys me a guaranteed dollar. What happens is in the middle of the night, my broker looks and says, "Okay, Frankenberg's got a short call at the end of the twenty. Uh, I'm sorry, a long call at the twenty-eight dollar strike, and so that gives him the right to own the stock at twenty-eight, and so he buys it. And he also says, "Oh, Frankenberg also has a short twenty-nine dollar call that obligates him to deliver at twenty-nine, and he exercises. Okay, so I pick up the dollar." And I've paid thirty cents for that management, so seventy cents gets caught in the money net. Now, if I had done a plain vanilla covered call, uh, remember it was eighty-five cents for the twenty-nine dollar calls. If I had sold just a plain vanilla covered call, I would have taken in eighty-five cents, and then had to pay uh, fifty-five cents on expiration Friday. So it would have been a net thirty, okay, instead of a net seventy. You got that? Got that. I'm with you. Okay, very good. So this is why I call it the money net. The money net captures more premium, uh, potentially, than a covered call. Now, <clears throat> let's let's uh, take a look at this. Remember the, the, the RPM, the radioactive profit machine, had cost $30.85 to get into, right? Uh, 27.35 for stock, 3.50 for the put. And now uh, I, I took a 25 cent credit by doing... Uh, income method number five, and then I had to manage it by buying to close one of those calls. So my cost basis is up to 31.15, which we showed a few screens ago, but my bull call spread closes in the middle of the night and puts a credit into my account of a dollar. So now my new cost basis for the stock and put is 30.15 instead of 30.85, right? I've caught the 70 cents difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, now so far that's kind of cool. What I've done is I've taken my thirty dollar eighty five cent uh, break even, and I've converted it to a thirty dollar fifteen cent break even, right? Yes. I'm reducing the gap. Okay, good. Now that was income method number five. Let's look at income method number three, the bulletproof vest. So the the put option, the twenty nine dollar put option, has come down in plus because the stock has gone up to just above that strike price. Now, Mike, the stock went up above $29, but the put would not go to zero. How come? Oh, we still have a lot of time value left on that put option, don't we, Kurt? Yeah. In fact, it's 100% time value. That's right. Yeah. It had been in the money, and uh, uh, as the uh, intrinsic value went away, it went away because uh, the, uh, the stock was gaining value. Okay, so I'm losing out of column A, but I'm gaining in column B, and I own both columns. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, but the time value actually increased. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. But uh, uh, and I, I know that some folks are saying, "Wait, how could that happen?" Well, this is a phenomenon that I observed back uh, 2003 when I was trading eBay, and income number three was first uh, discovered. Okay, uh, but uh, what happened was that the time value of this put went up. 
Okay, I swapped it by doing this. My, I, I sold the March twenty-nine dollar put option for two fifty-two, and simultaneously bought the November tw uh, thirty dollar put option for dollar sixty-two. So that makes for a net credit of ninety cents. Now, first of all, uh, let me ask you something. Do I have any short calls that are a part of this trade? No, sir. We still have an unlimited upside because you haven't entered any obligation that would cap your gain. That's right. Now, my income method number five trade is already coming on. It's already closed, right? So mm -hmm. do I have anything, anything limiting my upside? No. No. Okay. All right. Now, did I take a credit in order to do this? Yes, you've uh, swapped the put option out, so you're gaining 90 cents credit into your account against the position. Right. Right. Now, uh, another thing, is this me uh, kind of speculating on what the stock may do? Or is no. it more like I'm responding? Yeah. What, what's it more like? like? You're responding to what the stock has already done. You're taking advantage of the stock moving up, which swelled the time value on that particular put option. It went from in the money to at the money. This is described in the blueprint, one of the three core principles of radioactive trading. And by adjusting this, you're able to take advantage of the time value, get a credit into your account because of what the stock did, not what you were projecting what it was going to do going forward. That's right. And now I had some folks ask me, well, Kurt, you know, uh, uh, now you have to sell in November. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I never, I mean, remember I told you at the very beginning, I do not intend to hold the stock all the way out till March. Very true, sir. Right. Yeah, my intent never was to hold it all the way out to March. I'm just buying a March put because of the way puts behave that are far mm -hmm. up in time. Okay, so, and by the way, uh, I've raised the payout. If you, if, in case you didn't notice, I went from a $29 put option to a $30 put option. How can I do this? Well, uh, when the stock goes up, the puts come down, but not only do my far out in time puts come down, but my near in expiration puts go down more profoundly. And so that's why uh, I can swap a $29 put for a $30 put and take a credit. Okay? Kind of cool. All right, so let's take a look at what's happening now with our radioactive profit machine after the bulletproof vest. Okay? Now remember, after income method number five, I had reduced my cost basis from 30.85 to 30.15, by capturing 70 cents credit. That's now right. I capture another 90. 90 cents credit by doing income method number three. Do I still have a put option protected? Oh, absolutely. Your insurance uh, is still in place, but you've increased it by a dollar now, haven't you? Right. So my cost basis for owning stock and owning a put is now twenty nine twenty five, but it's a thirty dollar put. So how much is my risk now? Well, that's interesting, isn't it, Kurt? Your risk is now negative 75 cents. And what does a negative risk mean? A negative risk means a guaranteed minimum payout. I'm guaranteed to make 75 cents a share, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Now, that's kind of cool, because the reason I did this, Mike, uh, I swapped the March put for a November put. Yes. Because November 4th is when Altera was coming up with their earnings announcement. And November expiration happens after. Okay, so uh, so I wanted to go into that earnings announcement being bulletproof. It's October 15, after all, that I'm doing this. Okay, I'm swapping the March put for November put. It's October 15, and all I have to do for the next two weeks is sit. <laughs> next two and a half, three weeks, is sit on this guaranteed gain of 75 cents and look if uh, maybe I'm going to make more. Kind of cool. Okay. Now uh, uh, let's uh, let's tell the rest of the story. Okay. The bulletproof vest is one of several ways that you can reduce the cost basis for stock and put mm -hmm. to less than the put strike price, resulting in a new position that has unlimited upside but no risk. So we call bulletproof. Yes. And uh, like all radioactive training methods, uh, income methods, it follows this saying. Uh, remember before I, I said don't pick stocks, pick stocks. That's right. Well, here. Yeah, here I like to say don't time trades, trade time. I swapped time value. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Okay. See, the, the, the puts price was three dollars and fifty cents when I bought it, right? That's right. It was composed of 
a uh, dollar and sixty-five cents worth of intrinsic value and a dollar eighty-five cents worth of time value. The total price is three fifty. Mm -hmm. Now, for this, for the intrinsic value to go away, the stock's price has to go up above twenty-nine bucks. So, while this intrinsic value goes away, out of this column, I gain uh, the uh, intrinsic value in the uh, ownership of the stock. Okay. But here's something interesting. Yes, the net price of the put is lower after the stock goes up, but the uh, net time value. Time value. Yeah, the time value. It had been a dollar eighty-five, right? That's and right. The stock. Uh, yeah, and then the puts price after the stock goes above twenty-nine. The puts price is now uh, two fifty-two instead of three fifty. Well, gosh, the time value portion went up. And that's what's really exciting. I'm able to manipulate that time value. Income method number three is not the only one that does this. Income methods number four and nine uh, and, and seven also manipulate the value of a put. Okay, this is you already own. So once we reduce our gap to less than zero, okay, now we're bulletproof. And that's mm -hmm. really exciting. It's an exciting way to trade. Uh, Mike, you, uh, that uh, trade that I mentioned, uh, earlier, where you made 59.8% last year? Yeah, that was on Silver Wheaton. I opened it with a 7% at risk. It was the most I could lose on the position, and I believe I had seven months out in time for my put option when I first opened it. Right. And then one month in, you made yourself bulletproof, same, same as I did with Altera. But mm -hmm. instead of holding on for a 12%, you used the income methods to continually lock in a higher and higher and higher uh, guaranteed payout, but you still left the upside open. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. So you got bulletproof, and then after being bulletproof, you got bulletproofer, <laughs> and bulletproofer, and bulletproofer. <laughs> you, you, you made yourself uh, more and more invincible. It's kind of exciting. Okay. All right. Let me point something out. Remember, the original setup was twenty-seven thirty-five plus three fifty equals thirty eighty-five, and most folks look at that and say, "Well, Kurt, you can't make a dime." until your stock hits 3095. Well, by the time my stock had touched only 2940, all the income methods that you saw had been put in place. With the stock at 2940, not 3095, I was guaranteed to make 75 cents a share. Okay? So, uh, as it turns out in, in the end, okay, I made $3.85 a share because uh, Altera uh, did spike after the income uh, uh, I'm sorry, what do you call it, the earnings amount. Okay? So the summary was never had more than 6% at risk. Mike, you never had more than 7% at risk in your silver wheat and trade, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. That's okay. right, Kurt. Um, yeah, we should be showing your trade. It, uh, mine kind of pales in comparison to yours. <laughs> well, we have it archived. It is it is archived <laughs> in the uh, on RadioactiveTrading.com in the uh, yeah. free webinars and podcast archive. It's the SLW trade income method number one and four. I believe it's still up there. Right. Um, <clears throat> but I like to use this Altera example because it shows me playing Altera twice. And if I had played it with long calls or if I had played it with, uh, uh, with uh, stock only, uh, I would have gotten hurt badly. But because we used the radioactive profit machine, uh, you know, the same, same stock in the same time frame uh, made a net profit on the upside and the downside. Okay, so I ended up cashing in the stock for thirty-three ten. I made twelve percent, uh, which uh, you know, after paying for commissions for the stock in the put, uh, the ratio call spread, managing the ratio call spread, selling the stock, <coughs> after doing all those things. Oh, and rolling the put. Okay, after doing all those things, uh, uh, one tenth of one percent of my profit, bottom line, was affected. Okay, so we start off with six percent at risk and uh, ended up with 12% return. This isn't my most spectacular return, Mike, but it is a really good example. Oh, and I love, I think it's important to show the comparison that you showed earlier. You played this stock twice, and if you had done it as a long stock position, you might have made 17.3% and lost 21 or 33. If you traded it as a covered call, you would have only gained 3% on the way up and then still maybe only lost 18%, or let's say, let's be nice, and say even 16% on the way down but you still would have been uh, in the law zone. Right. Uh, but in fact, because uh, we, we played it with the, the uh, 
insurance policy on the put option. Uh, along with the stock, it ended up uh, with it being in that game. So in case you missed it, I just gave you the secret to success in the stock market, and that is to cut your loser short, much of them, and to, and to do it uh, practically. Now, real quick, I'm going to review some benefits of trading in the radioactive fashion. Okay, Number one is an overlay onto whatever trading you do. Mike trades different issues than I do. He has different stocks that he likes to play. He has different uh, entries and exits. But guess what? He uses radioactive trading just like I do as a risk management uh, plan. It's a plan for keeping you out of trouble. Okay? Um, losses are controlled from the beginning down into single digit percent. So you might take a, uh, a trade that you might not otherwise have taken. You know, you, you might get into a, a uh, uh, higher flying or bigger moving or higher profile stock with the certainty of not getting hurt too badly um, that you know otherwise you might not have done okay so it's kind of cool bulletproofing uh, I can't tell you the peace of mind that is available you know, for example my Humana trade I have no idea what Humana is doing so I don't care because I've already made the money <laughs> uh, scalable uh, Mike I showed this example with the 100 shares and uh, one put option but it could be 500 shares and five put options which is what I use or it could be a thousand shares and ten put options, which a bigger fish than you might use, and so on and so forth. So, okay, it's, it's scalable, but no matter what it would be, it would still be only six percent of my capital or your capital mm -hmm. or the big fish's capital at risk. Right? Kind of cool. Okay, uh, Mike, I'm going to go ahead and take questions. While we're taking questions, I'll go ahead and, and uh, uh, put this up there. And uh, oh yeah, and I have some questions for y'all. Um, do you remember when we did this exercise here, Mike, and 40% and, uh, would have said yes, I'm very happy with my trading. 15% would have said no, uh, had said no or mixed emotions, but would have said yes, mm -hmm. I'm happy with my trading. 20% had a losing year, but this would have made it a better year. 25% would have lost, but uh, lost much less. Let's see if we can put a dollar amount on how much better you would have done. Okay? <clears throat> and listen, if you were napping and you missed, uh, how forcing yourself not to lose too much could really help. Go ahead and be honest. You know, say say so, and and uh, we'll see if we can make it more clear. All right. Uh, if you would have saved at least three hundred fifty dollars, that's the cost of the blueprint. Okay. Um, if you'd be ahead by a thousand to nearly five thousand dollars, let us know. If this information would have made a difference of five to ten thousand dollars, or more than ten thousand dollars to you last year, let us know. <clears throat> So Mike, did any questions come in? Yeah, I'm just going to focus on the three, the three or four that I think are the most important for our entire audience, and I'll let you know how I answer them, and then you can chime in. Earlier on, Michael inquired about, do you ever try to use weekly options when doing the ratio spread or one of these different income methods? And the answer is yes, but also no. Kurt and I <laughs> won't enter a trade specifically hoping to do weekly options, because, right. and this also helps to answer part of Carolyn's question that she said, and Carolyn had asked, you know, when you're looking at this position, what would have happened if the stock went down on the Altera position, or did you do the income method right away? We never do an income method right away. When we get into the married put, the blueprint discusses it's best to wait for the stock to move one direction or the other. Of the ten income methods, some work if the stock moves up, there are three or four that can be used if the stock is stagnating, and there are, in my opinion, two or three that can be used if the stock falls in price from when you first open the RPM. Now. The rules in the blueprint for each individual income method discuss why it's not a good idea to try to force yourself into an income method when you first open the RPM. You can actually increase your risk if you go into an income method too soon. Now, why that's important is, yes, the weekly options should give you the advantage of having a greater annualized return if you're selling week by week by week as opposed to month by month by month. But we can't force the stock to do what it's going to do. We're not going to time our trades. We're going to trade time. Okay, so we're going to wait right. for the stock to move, and then we're going to implement the income method that best matches our goals and our expectations going forward. So in that case, Michael, we don't specifically set out to say, I'm going to trade to a stock that has weekly options, so I'm going to do this every week. If it has weekly options and the stock moves, I can use weekly options, as Kurt, you did with Baidu, I believe, and uh, I think there was another stock where you traded weekly options on. But we don't set out specifically to do that because we don't know exactly when the stock's going to be trading in a time where it's going to be good 
to use the income methods. We're not going to force an income method just because right. the stock has weekly options. And uh, yeah, so far I haven't. So so far, Mark, I haven't been impressed with uh, the returns of weekly options. See, it, it means making a decision that turns out to be right or wrong. I agree. <laughs> I do agree. Yeah. And we've discussed that so, in some so of what? the uh, open discussion presentations on Friday afternoon yeah. that I host as well. When weeklies first came out, I was actually pretty excited, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but uh, I found that they are too efficiently priced and too uh, uh, it, it, it's too difficult to um, to really keep up with them. I, I'd rather you know uh, the trading the way that I do it is about as exciting as watching a penny drop. I'd really rather not be in the market all the time. Mm -hmm. So okay, Mike, let me uh, close the uh, poll there and share the results. Like nine out of ten like the idea of bulletproofing in second place, the opportunity to adjust risk and take income on the way. So those are the, the things they like most about reductive trading. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to ask, what, what, do you, what do you want to know more about next? And uh, uh, we'll, we'll put up our offer. And, um, uh, we, well, I guess we've already said the offer. It's 339 for the blueprint or 350, you know, after a token. I got a comment for you, Kurt, that I wanted to share. Our, uh, our good friend Ray said he's attended several of our Married Puts webinars over the course of uh, different years. He probably started with that old GMCR one we used to show and uh, the original new one we started showing 12 months ago. Ray says, this has been your best and most easily understood presentation so far. You know, After the tweaks you've made in the past uh, four or five months, Kurt, with some of those examples and comparisons, I think it really makes it clear as to uh, the benefits not only of the technique and the income methods, but why the standard way we've been taught to trade and what's taught for $3,000 over a weekend is not necessarily the way to go. Wow. Uh, thank you, Ray, for that, for that input. I sure appreciate it. Um, okay. Uh, Mike, uh, our clear winner here is, is, is to secure the offer for the blueprint. In the mm -hmm. second place, uh, there's a, a, a tie. Uh, some folks already have the blueprint. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, what now? You know, so uh, I'm going to say uh, go to Red Active Trading, pick up the blueprint if you haven't already. And if, uh, if you already do have the blueprint, uh, we are rolling out a new uh, educational program called Fusion. It's uh, very much like uh, the old uh, fishing subscription where you could look over my shoulder and the shoulder of other Red Active Traders and see how we're doing or, or how we're responding to the market. But Fusion uh, includes accountability, it includes a uh, back and forth, it includes assignments, it includes lessons that we're unlocking, and uh, Fusion will be available here within the next few weeks. Right now I have written a number of lessons, or he has tried to use written some lessons, and uh, I, would, I would recommend going and picking up a Fusion subscription uh, by the 1st, you know, by, by September 1st, if you already have it. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to talk about the guarantee. Mike, if, uh, uh, if you were to pick up the blueprint, and uh, just were not satisfied, you know, weren't happy with it one way or the other. What's our policy with that? Well, we're going to ask that you, uh, if you're not satisfied with it, you can send it back to us and we'll refund the money. You find it's not, not for you, you don't think that's what you want to trade, send it back to us and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, refund the purchase price for the blueprint. Right. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, kind of a big deal. You know? I mean, it's like a married put that's bulletproof, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, there's no telling how much the married put could do for you. But uh, in case you're wrong about it, in case uh, you got into the stock and, and it doesn't take off, um, well, you can't lose. Um, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the way it is with, with uh, the blueprints. Um, Mike, I was doing a little reduction to the ridiculous about. Uh, uh, about the value of the blueprint. I'm showing uh, income method number uh, five earlier. Uh, would pick up $200 more credit than cover calls with, just for knowing income method five. Mm -hmm. uh, income method number three took a 90 cent credit uh, with five contracts, that's 450. So, so just those two trades, you know, did pretty good. And could you do this more than once, maybe? <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, yeah, once you learn the technique, it, it can be worth quite a bit to you. Uh, and uh, I think it's important. So uh, what to do right now, if, if you haven't picked up the blueprint, I would recommend going to redactortrain.com, going to the products page, and taking advantage of the, uh, the risk-free offer. Mm -hmm. uh, or pick up uh, your phone and, and call uh, Power Options. Okay, if you need to set up a consultation with Mike, he will show you how to find these kinds of trades. How to find these kinds of trades. 
hear that. So, uh, Mike, uh, any last thoughts or any last questions? I, I, I guess I wasn't looking at the time. I, I'm going to guys. I apologize. I do normally try to respect everyone's time. We're past uh, where we said we would be mm -hmm. by about 12 minutes. Um, uh, is there any last thoughts that you have there, Mike? Just for now, um, if we didn't get to, I got through most of the questions, and there would be one or two I didn't get through here. Um, so if you have thoughts, just send us an email, support at radioactivetrading.com. You'll either get an answer from Kurt or myself within the, you know, within half an hour, 45 minutes. When you send the, the email during market hours, if you send it after market hours, I'll get back to you first thing tomorrow morning, or Kurt will get to you at night. Usually he's, he's more active at night than I am, but uh, yeah, we'll get back to you as soon <laughs> as possible. So please, you know, even if you don't own the blueprint, even if you're, you're still concerned, you're thinking, I just don't see how this is going to work. I don't see how you guys are doing it. Even if you don't own the blueprint, we'll, we'll share some things with you. We'll answer any questions that you have. That's not a problem. Very cool. Okay. Mike, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the sound. And, and uh, if uh, folks want to pose questions, I'll be available for about another two or three minutes, and we're going to close up completely. So uh, okay. thanks for being here today. And uh, thank you, everybody, that stuck around. Um, we got uh, 28 of you still online, and I sure appreciate all your curiosity and your questions that you're posting in, so I'll, I'll do my best to answer. If you miss me, uh, support at radioactivetrading.com is how to get it, okay? Uh,